Now, looking at the worksheet, it says to sketch an altitude from B. I've already done that. Perfect. I labeled that K. Okay. So you see here, now we have a triangle that, uh, well, is a uh, triangle on the left and right. We don't know what that point is. Maybe I'll call that B. So we have BDC. We have ABD, two different sides. They're both right triangles, which is helpful. It's helpful. Now let's look at this. Uh, the altitude creates two triangles, right? So if I to express the sine of C and the sine of A, let's go ahead and start there. We know that the sine of an angle is the opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse, right? So let's do it for C first. From this angle here, theta, what is my opposite side of the triangle? Forget about this side of the triangle. Forget about that. Just looking here, where is the opposite side? Okay. Okay. Opposite. Okay. All right, what is the hypotenuse? Let's look. Right angle. Okay. How about the other side? It's still opposite and hypotenuse. From angle A, which is the opposite? Okay. Which is the hypotenuse? Here's the right angle. C. So that isn't crazy to derive. We can do that. We can do that. <laughs> If you follow the logic with this, I'm not going to ask you to do this again. It's part of the standard. I want you to see how this is created. Um, so now what we have to do is solve for solve for uh, k for both of these. So let's say sine of c is equal to k over a. If I want to solve for if I want to solve for uh, k, all I need to do is multiply by a. Multiply by a. That's going to cancel my a's. And then I get A times sine C is equal to K. Let's do the other side. Sine of A, right now it's K and C. So how about we multiply by C? Multiply by C, both sides of the equation. You can do that. It does not change the values. There we go. C sine of A is equal to K. What's in common between these two? They're both equal to k. These guys, it's the same system, and k is the exact same border within the triangle. We know these k's are equal to each other. So we go ahead and break it down here. We break it down to a sine c is equal to c sine a. Okay. You see there's just one more step to get to what we're doing up here. Okay. That's it. So how about we divide by a? We divide by a. That's going to end up with sine of C is equal to sine of A over A. And there's a C up here, too. So now I need to divide by C, divide by C. Gone, gone. All right. We do it to both sides. We're OK. So from that, I'm just going to erase this part because we got rid of it. Sine of C over side C is equal to the sine of A over side A. Okay. The only thing, the only difference to find, we just found some information about A and C. You know those are equal. All three of these are equal. Because I could find it between A and B. I could try, try to find it between A and B if I just put my altitude in a different location and do the same exact process. So if I'm looking for A and B, I'm going to break it this way. And now I have my K. I have the angle B I'd assess, the angle A. I'd end up with the same exact work, except for instead of sine C is equal to C, or sine C over C and A over A, it would just be, uh, you know, essentially we would just be adding the other one because we'd see they're all equal no matter how we break it down. That's how we get to the law of sines. The law of sines requires a right triangle, requires the uh, altitude, but now we can use this for any, for any triangle. That's the key. That's why this is helpful, because if the angles are like 47, 52, and whatever that is, uh, 97, uh, that's going to end up being uh, 94, whatever. That's going to end up being a little bit harder. You won't be able to use Sokotoa, because that requires right triangles. Okay. So when you have a weird balance of angles, like we look here, 34 degrees, the other angles, you know, that's unlikely to have a right triangle in there. Uh, just looking at them, they all look pretty similar. Over here, 2 pi over 9, pi over 3, that's also something we got to 
keep in mind. We can use any angles. All right, thumbs up, sideways, down for how this proof is derived, at least. Can we all see it and follow it when I'm breaking it down? Okay. Uh, what number did you guys get through? Yeah. I got to 13. Nice. With the whole group, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Of course. Sure. All right, I know the back group needed help a little bit, but you're getting it now? Okay. Uh, how far did you get? Eight? Good. So first side, got to the first side. First side? We finished it, but Luke was gone. Luke left us. I'm on number 11. I got back like two minutes later. Cool. You guys at the first side? All of it? Good job. All right. So now we're going to pause. I'm going to pause the video. I am back. Here's the deal. What is the angle B? Angle B? What's up? Pi over 3, right? What is angle C? Pi over 9. Pi over 9, close. What is uh, side C? Pi. Pi. What's le left and what are we looking for? B. This is what we're looking for. That's the unknown. So which two components are we going to use for this one, obviously? Sine of B over B is equal to sine of C over C. So I want you to go and just write that out so you get you don't lose track of what you're actually using to solve this. So the sine of B over B is equal to the sine of capital C. The capitals are all our angles, lowercase are all the sides every time. Now, I have a lot of information I can input here. And when I input everything I know, there's going to be one thing missing. That's obviously the thing you're going to solve for. We're going to solve for what we don't know. So let's go ahead and put in the sine of pi over 3 over b that I'm looking for. That's equal to the sine of 2 pi over 9 over our side c, which we know. Right. It's in centimeters. I say drop the units. You just got to remember at the end to look for the units. Centimeters. How do I know? 5 centimeters. Okay, in radian mode, now look what we have to do. In radian mode, all I have to do is find my decimal version for that. Find my decimal version for that. I have five here. That's going to leave me with one thing unknown. One thing unknown we can always solve for. So this is actually a really quick process. It's really helpful and quick. So somebody, somebody give me the sign of pi over 3. over b. What is the sign of 2 pi over 9? 
0.6429 over 5. You see, now all of a sudden we only have one thing missing. It's our B value. We can solve this quick. In fact, this can be reduced to just a, a single number. 0.6428 divided by 5. So you can do that as well, just to make it easier for our last step. All right, so let's look at that last step. We end up with 0.866 over B, and this part over here in radian mode, 0.6428 divided by 5. And it's not going to make a difference at that point. 0 0.1286. Always stay at least four decimal places out. That gives you enough accuracy. Um, what's my uh, almost last step here? Solve for B. Solve for B. Uh, a couple ways to do it. I see. So you're thinking about getting the B on top. And uh, uh, another way to do it, since we were making a proportion here, we can just put that over 1 and do cross multiplication. And we could have done that over here. I just recall. I just remember that now. So we get 0 0.1286 times B, and that's equal to 0.866. Last step. Divide by 0.1286. All right, gone. B value then is equal to something in centimeters. Let's do it. 0.866 divided by 0 0.1286. 6.734 centimeters. Already done. Who likes a lot of signs? Some people. Right? Me too. This works for any any triangle. You don't need a right triangle. You don't need a right triangle. Sokotoa applies to right triangles, remember, because we have the hypotenuse involved. That's a right triangle aspect. Okay. So when we're dealing with these problems, we pretty much, based on the information we have, we decide which two components to use. Fill it in, cross multiply, and work down to your answer. Remember the units at the end if you took them off. Thumbs up, sideways, down for this so far. Thumbs up, sideways, down. Okay, good, good. What's a crux? Somebody tell me a crux. What's the, the part that could potentially mess folks up? Can't crux. Uh, Luke? Not uh, putting the correct units at the end. Uh, the units over. That's one thing. Boom. Uh, Gene, what do you got? I actually have a question. Um, so, does it matter what you're going to Got it. It does. Why are these assigned in certain positions here? Why is C here? B is here. It's opposite. It's opposite. It's always exact opposite from the angle, right? So uh, you could think of it as a projector if conceptually that's difficult, and it's no slant on anybody. We all think different, mentalize different. So if you need to think of it like this, like here's projector A, what wall is that going to project onto? There's no projectors that look like that. But it's going to project onto A on the other side. So yes, the sides have to be in that configuration. Any other candy crux? Is there any other thing somebody could mess up or not understand? What else do you have? Sentoshi. You mean not cross-multiplying? Cross-multiplying. Good. So if you don't cross-multiply, you're here, right? You might multiply the B over there, and then you have to divide it. And essentially, it's going to be two steps as well, but we know how to cross-multiply. So the second problem, I'll also I'll, uh, I'll make sure to do it more direct that way. Sylvan, another one? Uh, when we're starting out, he's putting everything in the right place. And right the, place. The part in red. OK. So it seems like there's kind of a steep requirement to get everything right right away. And get it in. Double check everything there, because you don't want the rest of it, which is the easy part, really, to uh, be flawed because of a little mistake like that. Uh, Lincoln, last one. Uh, not switching your calculator. Not switching to radians. Okay. So these are all things that. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, no. 
These are all things that we can definitely accomplish. This next one going to be very similar. I just need to ask you, uh, what mode are we going to be in for our calculator? Degrees. Degrees. The clue? It gives you 34 degrees as one of the angles. So go ahead and switch your calculator back. Switch your calculator back. Degrees, good. All right, let's look at this really close. Let's look at it pretty close here. Let's see if angle, find angle C. So I know I'm looking for this angle. And what is the side that corresponds to angle C? What's the value for it? Is there a value for the side that corresponds to angle C? No. There you go. So that's maybe C. Uh, let's see. We know information about angle A, the side that corresponds there, 7. Okay. Pretty easy to figure out what we're looking for based on what we have, <laughs> and the one thing we're looking for is going to be part of the main question here. So all this information had already been inter interpreted and put on this. Now let's look at which two components should I use, A, B, or C? A, a and C. Sine of A over A is equal to sine of C over C. Okay. So far so good. All right, I want you to carefully input things. What is angle A? You can put that there. We're looking for angle C, but we know what A and C are as well. So go ahead and set up your next proportion. The next step will be cross multiply. Best shot. You. you see how now there's one thing missing? We know we set it up right if there's just one thing missing. So I'd say Let's get that sine of 34 degrees worked out so we have a value there. And then I would cross multiply. So you can do that after. You could decide I'm going to do sine of 34 degrees times 9. You could cross multiply now. But I say let's get it so we don't have to. But it's your choice. Okay. I want to teach you that there's a bunch of ways to do every problem. You find works for you, go for it. what we learned on Monday, Tuesday, there's a few ways to solve each of those problems. I'm giving you the first step. If you find others, that's really good. Okay, now, this is where I say we can just cross multiply right off the bat. I write it out, but do not mind if you just multiply this times 9. I just like to show every day you say. Multiply that together, 0.5, all that times 5.0327. 7 times the sine of. Okay. We want to isolate what we don't know. We need to get rid of the 7. And from that, From that, we're going to be able to use the arc sine. Jane's favorite. No, arc tan is your favorite. Ceiling arc tan is your favorite. Okay, wrapping it up. Let's see. We have 5.0327 divided by 7. So we cross that out over here. We get the sine of, bringing this up, the sine of C is equal to. 0 0.71896. I'm going to go ahead and put that many. So the minimum is four decimal places. If you see that rounding would get rid of a lot, then don't round and just bring it a little bit further. You're just looking for accuracy. Because if we round this, what do we end up with? 0 0.72. That's not accurate enough. So I left more digits than I need. It's always fine to do it. Now here's the deal. On your calculator, you have a button that is the sine negative 1. 
That's the arc sign. The arc sign is not equal to, if we look at our identities up here, the arc sign is not equal to the cosecant. These cosecant, secant, and cotangent are reciprocal functions of trig. They aren't the inverse. The inverse arc sign is looking at, if I know theta, I just take the regular sine of theta to get 0.5 or whatever it is. I know that uh, if I knew theta. So if I don't, I'm trying to find theta, I take the arc sine, the sine negative 1 of 0.5, of the actual ratio on this side. And that allows me to get the theta. You see how it's just the other direction. If you know theta, regular sine function, work it out. If you know the side and not theta, you do the arc sine to find theta. It's just the other direction. It's really look at learning how to use that calculator well. It's not a big question. No, okay. Check. All right, so let's see. We're going to go ahead and do the arc sine of 0 0.71896. And that is going to be equal to our theta. Or is, in essence, what we're looking for is our angle C. You see how I just switched around? Arc sine just goes the opposite direction. You know that, get this. You know this, do that. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, everybody find it on the calculators. And then go ahead and put in that value. 0 0.71896. Forty-five point nine six degrees. Let me go ahead and do that. Otherwise, it keeps rounding to forty-six degrees, and we have our answer. Do I need to? I don't even have to remember the units in this because I was looking for the angle. So I put degrees because we start in degrees, and that's all. Thumbs up, sideways, down for doing this kind of stuff. Doing this standard, still in the middle. Okay. Anybody have some candy crux? What part over here was challenging? There's one more step we have to do. Santoshi, what could somebody say? The inverse, the arc sign. Good. Oops. Yeah. Uh, hey, I don't have a, I don't have a question. Okay. <laughs> so how would you turn it into a radian? Would you? Well, if the question gives one of the angle measures in degrees, they want me to keep it consistent. So I knew that. In radians. Oh, how would I do it to radians? That's just a conversion problem. So I would take. Uh, uh, well, actually, I'll make the this side. It was 180 over pi because those are equivalents. Okay, yeah, yeah. Remember this? Yeah. So it would be uh, 96 degrees over theta gradients. Cross multiply. There's a shortcut to that. Actually, think about it and figure if there's like a coefficient you can just multiply everything by every time. Think about it. Okay, uh, any other candy cruxes? I saw a hand up over here. Had a candy crux? I think mainly the inverse, right? It's the inverse. Okay, so today's classwork is in the workbook. Tomorrow we're actually staying in the same lesson. We're just going to be looking at area of a triangle aspect here. So I want you to go ahead and get in the workbook, page 57, it's 1 through 5, and then 8 through 10. And uh, yeah, you actually. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching.